Hello and welcome back to the second section of the CAPS2 Library Tutorial. In this section, we'll cover how to find review articles, systematic reviews, and meta-analyses. Although it's important to be able to locate RCTs efficiently in sources such as PubMed or Embase or Central, often when you're starting to do research about a topic, secondary literature is more useful. Can you think of sources that you currently use to find secondary literature, such as review articles or systematic reviews? I'll give you a moment to think about that while I load this next page. This is the Hierarchy of Evidence-Based Medicine by the Duke University Medical Library. And this is one way that I like to think of distinguishing between the types of evidence that are available to us in the biomedical literature. At the bottom of the hierarchy, you'll see that beginning with a vast quantity of background information or expert opinion, we move up through more rigorous levels of evidence. So for example, RCTs are at the top of the unfiltered information. As we're moving up the hierarchy, we're getting fewer in numbers of articles, but theoretically higher in terms of the quality of evidence. This doesn't necessarily mean that all systematic reviews are better than randomized control trials. What this means is that as you move up the hierarchy, there is an explicit effort to reduce the bias and error that comes from methodologies that are lower down on it. So, in our search for review articles, systematic reviews, and meta-analyses, let's begin with PubMed. I'm going to go to the library homepage, and from there, I'll connect to PubMed through e-resources, indexes, and databases. If you're doing PubMed searching from home, you'll know that you can go directly to PubMed by just typing in the URL bar, pubmed.gov but I would always recommend connecting to my VPN and then connecting through the library. And this is because if you do so, you'll be able to use the e-links that appear inside PubMed as you're searching. If you go directly to the general URL instead of connecting through the library, you won't see those full text UBC e-links. So let's connect. And the file that we want is PubMed 1949 to present, and we'll continue. PubMed is the U.S. National Library's own interface for searching Medline. It also allows you to search in-process citations. Those are the records that have not yet been tagged with the MeSH heading. And you're also able to search old Medline, which are records dating back earlier than the indexing. So in PubMed, let's take, a, let's take our topic and change it slightly. Let's say that we're interested in recent articles that synthesize the literature on varanicin in smoking cessation. So smoking cessation, varanicin, will enter this all as a long keyword string. In PubMed, it's possible to do a very quick, simple Google-type search and have the translation algorithm take care of mapping to the MeSH subject headings. So let's put this in, and the database will sort of parse or um, divide the string of words in the way that um, it sees fit. So we're going to go and search. And then on the connecting page, you'll see the number of results we have. If you haven't been in PubMed since it had its recent facelift, then things will be in different um, places from what you're used to in the past. So I'll give you a quick overview here of what's available. So the results, there are 320 in our search display. You can change how things are displayed by clicking on the display settings drop down. So let's say, for example, if you want everything to show in the abstract view 
and you'd like 50 results rather than 20, you can select that. And then you can also sort by different fields. So I'm going to apply. And it is nice to be able to see things in the abstract view so that you can get a better sense of what the articles are about. One thing that I definitely recommend when doing a PubMed search is to have a look at the search details. And that's in this box on the right-hand side. And I recommend this because when you're doing just a keyword string, as we've done, Pub, what PubMed does in the background is that it takes your words and translates them into mesh headings and words in various fields. So for example, it looks at the words that we put in, tries to map it to the mesh, and then tries to match it to author, last names, etc. What it does is go through a, a select translation process. So in this case, what it's doing with smoking cessation is that it recognizes that as a mesh term. But just to be safe and to cover all the bases, it also searches for smoking as a word anywhere and cessation as a word anywhere. With Vera Nyklin, PubMed will search it again as a word anywhere, all fields meaning that it's searched in a very broad way. But it recognizes that Vera Nyklin is a substance name. And substance name is a special category that's often used on drug terms. So it is doing a pretty good job of mapping here in that it recognizes how to parse the words so that they make sense as concepts. Now, this isn't always the case. You might remember last year that we did this search. So if we, for example, search for Motrin, and we look at the way that it has interpreted the search, you'll see that it maps to ibuprofen as a mesh term here. On the other hand, if we search for Advil, it'll ask you, did you mean Anvil? You'll notice that the search result, 24, that's a much smaller number than what we got with Motrin, and in the search details, it's looking for Advil in all fields, meaning that it hasn't been able to map it to a mesh heading. So let's go back to our earlier search of smoking cessation varanyclin. And you can find your search history by going to advanced search up at the top. And in that first box, you'll be able to see a record of everything that you've searched so far. So I'm going to go back to this set here of 320. And one of the nice things about PubMed is that it takes your search set and it divides it into certain categories. And one of the categories is the review category. And you'll see that there are 108 results rather than 320. When you filter using this review link here, you'll find both review articles and systematic reviews because the filter covers both types of publications. So this brings us to the question, what really is the difference between a review article and a systematic review? So a review article is written by one or more authors to summarize the current state of research on a particular topic. They're useful because they give you a sense of who the main scholars are in a field, the recent advances or discoveries on a topic, and ideas about where the research might be heading next. Review articles do this mostly by synthesizing the findings of primary literature or individual studies. On the other hand, a systematic review also synthesizes the primary literature but tries to do so in a highly rigorous and well-documented way. 
A systematic review usually begins with a specific clinical question. The authors or review team try to find as many studies as they can on the topic. This means searching multiple databases and even combing through journals and other sources that aren't covered in databases just to make sure that key studies aren't missed. The review group then applies exclusion and inclusion criteria to select the best studies. These studies are then combined and compared, and the quality of evidence is assessed and used to evaluate the results and arrive at a proper conclusion. So where does meta-analysis fit into all this? Meta-analyses are often components of systematic reviews, although a systematic review doesn't necessarily have to include a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is a statistical method used to extract and combine data from studies to produce a summary result. In other words, it's the data crunching portion of a systematic review. So let's look at the results here. I've said that in this set, you might be getting either systematic reviews or review articles. How do you know which it is that you're getting? Well, the answer to that isn't absolutely cut and dried. What you will have to do is to look at the abstract in order to glean what kind of study it is. It may be a more, it may be a traditional review more in line with what I've noted about review articles, or it might be a highly rigorous systematic review. And as you can see here, because we've connected through the library, the library's list of indexes and databases, you get the UBC e-link button. To find out what MeSH terms are associated with a record, you can click on this link here for MeSH terms. And this is often helpful because you can check using the MeSH terms whether your search has been effective. So if you discover certain MeSH terms that you might have not considered, for example, if you wanted to put in treatment outcome a MeSH term to focus the topic further. This will give you ideas about how to improve your search strategy. Now, if you wanted to find systematic reviews in a more focused way, there is also the option of doing a slightly different search. So returning to the home page, we can do so by clicking on pubmed.gov. And further down, you'll see a section called Clinical Queries under PubMed Tools. One of the search options that are offered here is a Systematic Reviews Finder. So let's try running our search again. Vera Nyklin. smoking cessation. And this time we get 22 results, which is quite a small, smaller number compared to what we had in the past. But again, with the systematic review, clinical query search, what you will find is not exclusively systematic reviews. This category also includes meta-analyses, reviews of clinical trials, cons consensus development conferences, guidelines, and others. So you're getting closer to systematic reviews, but be warned that this clinical query search is also searching for other publication types at the same time. And they're all broadly grouped under the systematic subset, which is what it's called. You can actually do a systematic review subset search just by putting in, in the main search box, systematic, and then SB in the square bracket. So let's have a look at what kind of results are coming up.
If we wanted to locate the full text for, let's say, this third article here, we would have to select the title, and in the abstract view, you'll see a number of links. In this case, the article actually comes from a, a free journal, so you can select this link here, free full text article in PubMed Central. PubMed Central is a repository of open access for free journals, and so you can link to the full text in this case. In other cases, you may see a record for a systematic review that is in Cochrane. So for example, number five comes from a systematic review that is indexed in the Cochrane database. The Cochrane Collaboration, as I mentioned before, is an international organization that's devoted to disseminating evidence-based information, particularly in the form of systematic reviews. So let's click on that title. And in this case, you'll see there are two links here. Currently, there's a Canada-wide trial um, that allows any Canadian to find systematic reviews, the full text of systematic reviews for free online. So clicking on this full text link here will actually take you to the full text that's part of the trial. What I would actually recommend, though, because the trial is only continuing until January 31st of 2010, is that when you're looking for the full text of a systematic review, you should go to the Cochrane Database of Systematic Reviews, which is available through a library subscription through Ovid. So back to e-resources, indexes, and databases and we'll enter Cochrane. And this time it's not central, but CDSR, Cochrane Database of Systematic Reviews. And so what we can do is, of course, for the next month or so while the Canada-wide free trial is going on, you can click on this full text online. But after that, if you ever find a record for a systematic review in PubMed and you're wondering how to find the full text, I would recommend not clicking on the UBCE link because the linking mechanism isn't perfect and you'll end up going around in circles. So what you'll need to do instead is to find the record from database of systematic reviews. So I copied the title, and I'm actually going to paste it into the Cochrane Database's search box with a dot TI on the end, which means search for this as a title. And it narrows it down to the one record that we're looking for. And when you get to this screen, again, don't click on UBC eLink, but go instead to the full text review. The Cochrane database in Ovid SP offers full text for all of the records that it brings up. And once you're in the database, or rather the record, you have the option of viewing it either in HTML or as a PDF file, if you prefer. It's interesting to look at the types of categories covered in a systematic review. So you'll see that it's quite a lengthy document and that a systematic review or a good one will include a search strategy, how the authors found the comprehensive collection of studies that they're considering. They will spell out in their methods the criteria for considering the studies and then the results that come out of them. So you can see that the table of contents on the right-hand side is quite, quite lengthy.
We've looked at how to locate a particular systematic review once we know that it's there, but you might want to use Cochrane Database as your search for actually locating systematic reviews on a particular topic. So in this database, what you'll see um, or what you may notice is that there is no option to use subject headings. That's because there is no mapping algorithm here. So in this database, it's pretty much a keyword strategy. So if you were looking for articles on Vera Nyklin, you would simply enter it into the search box. Now with Vera Nyklin, it's a very um, distinctive drug term and it's fairly new. So you're seeing that the results are pretty small in number. If you, for example, did a search for diabetes instead, you'll see that there's a huge number of results. And so again, in this database, it's often very helpful to limit the keyword to the title. Okay. Let's try actually a title and abstract search so that we're not being too, too limiting and see how that makes a difference. So as you can see that with a keyword search strategy, it's quite different searching diabetes generally, diabetes in the title, or diabetes as a title or abstract word. So let's have a look at Vera Nyklin. I'll display the results. One thing that I want to point out before I conclude this section of the tutorial is that in this database, there are basically two kinds of publications. There are completed systematic reviews, but there are also protocols for systematic reviews. And what protocols are, they are essentially blueprints for future systematic reviews. So if you ever run into a full text document that looks quite a bit shorter or abbreviated, it's probably because it's a protocol, which means that the, the full review has not yet been done yet and that the review is simply planned for at this stage. So this would be a good way to check on systematic reviews that are coming down the pike as well. This concludes section three, or sorry, section two of the online tutorial. Archive recording.